Happy Thursday. Welcome back to Thursday Thoughts. Jessica and Casey with you today. We are talking about parties and the summer and holidays and how to stay on track with your health goals and not just throw all your hard work out the window like it is so tempting to do when you're sitting on a patio and drinking a glass of wine. So we're kind of just going to put some tough love into you today and uh, remind you why you're doing this, but also some tactics on what to do um, so you can have that healthy balance and still enjoy the summers and holidays, barbecues, patio season, all of the things. Um, we also know that in Canada, Victoria Day is coming up this Monday, and then Memorial Weekend is the following Monday here in the U.S. So um, definitely barbecue parties and patios are all of the things there. So um, this came at a perfect timing. So before we get into it, let's just introduce ourselves for anybody that's new in our community. Um, I am Casey Kephart. I'm a functional medicine nutritionist. I am the founder of the Feel Good Formula. I work with women with all different types of autoimmune diseases to um, gain back your energy, trash your symptoms, and get back to the activities that you love to do. And I live in St. Petersburg, Florida, where the sun always shines. That's amazing. <laughs> and I'm Jessica Melnick. I'm a registered holistic nutritionist, the founder of the Anti-Arthritis Method, and the host of the Happy Joints Arthritis Solutions Group. And I help people with various forms of arthritis get back to living life that the way that they want to, not the way that they have to because of their illness. So yes, that's me in a nutshell. Awesome. All right. So we explained what we're talking about today. So let's just get right into it. So Again, we need to think about the cost of what it, what is the cost of you throwing your health out the window for one barbecue, three barbecues, lunch on a patio with your girlfriends or your guy friends. Um, what does that cost you? Because I know for Jessica and I, it costs us not being able to get off the couch, either for me, like depression and mood for Jessica, her joints. Um, it costs us not being able to hang out with our friends or be more social. It costs us um, more flare ups and just feeling yucky and not being able to go to work or calling off of work or, I mean, the, the list is endless. And if you have a family and kids and maybe you can't run around with your kids anymore. So when we're talking about all of these things, think about the cost of what it would be like if you did decide to just let go of your health goals for that party or for that that summer. Um, so one of the things that I want to remind you of that we've said before um, is if you're gluten free, um, which we would highly suggest if you have an autoimmune disease and you're working towards being gluten free and you're semi gluten free or you're totally strict gluten free, whether you're celiac or not, um, we both encourage you to stay on that gluten free tract and not have the mindset of like, oh, one one donut won't hurt me at breakfast with the girls this morning. One um, bite of pizza won't hurt. Um, it does hurt. It does hurt your gut. And it puts you back three months of your healing journey. So let's say you spent the first three months not eating gluten, you're feeling pretty great. Um, that one bite of pizza, donut, whatever is your, your jam there, takes you back that three months of healing. So that is not worth it at all. Um, even if it's one time, but a lot of times it's one time this Saturday, one time next Friday, one time the following Monday. Um, these things lead up to chronic, chronic inflammation, and it will put you back into a flare-up or um, inflammation, having another autoimmune disease, and you just feeling really, really crappy. So um, we would definitely recommend to bring gluten-free goodies and stay on that that side of the wagon. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I just wanted to add to that, Casey, um, with how how much eating something that is off plan can really set you back. So eating something like gluten, if you have an autoimmune condition, or, you know, eating some cheese, 
or any other things like possibly corn. I know a lot of my clients are very sensitive to corn, as am I. Um, having something like that can, even if you just have like a little bit, um, it can, depending on how sensitive you are, put you into a flare, like you said, and it just slows down your whole like progression, you know, in terms of getting better. It's like having, even if it's just a little bit, it's still creating the same process in your body that is creating your autoimmune symptoms. So it's actually taking longer and it's holding you back from getting better. Mm -hmm. So if you're putting all this effort into eating properly and avoiding the foods that you know you're sensitive to, or that, you know, we teach you about in our program and have in other lives, it's just going to prolong the process. So not to say that cutting back is like useless, but if you really, really want to have speedier results, you have to be really diligent. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, another thing would be your moods and energy. So if you've been on this healing journey, health journey, whatever it is, think about how much energy you have right now or how much you've gained. Think about your mood now versus um, three months ago. I know when I was first going through this autoimmune disease journey, my mood was so unstable. It went up and down with what I ate. And like my, my whole days dictated off of my mood, which is so irritating. Um, and so if you start eating the foods that you know don't agree with you, whether that be gluten, dairy, corn, kale, whatever it is, um, those moods and energy are going to dip. And now think about how you're going to be enjoying this summer, this holiday, this birthday party, this patio season with a shitty mood and with energy to where you don't want to do the next patio. You don't want to do the next barbecue. So you're kind of setting yourself up for failure here. Um, so reminding yourself of these two big factors of what happens when you eat food that's not agreeable to you. Um, you're setting yourself up for failure next time and for the following week and maybe month. It just it just depends. And it's hard to come back from that, honestly. I mean, for me, um, if I go off the rails, it takes me a good week to get back to my energy and to my mood to stabilize and for me not to feel so down on myself. Um, that's all I got to say about that. Yeah. So. Uh, we do have lots of suggestions of things that you can do um, mm -hmm. because you can still enjoy yourself with some modifications. I know that it's not easy to give up certain foods that we love and have been part of our lives for a long time. I completely get that. Yeah. It can feel like a bit of a grieving period. And I know like Casey and I both within our programs, we really help to work with our clients to, you know, change the way you're thinking about that, change your perception on this thing, on these things. So Instead of focusing on what I can't have, we're focusing on what you can have. And there's probably going to be lots of new things that are kind of exciting that you've never tried before that you're discovering that you actually do like. And also thinking about what is this actually doing for me? How is this helping me? How is this healing me? How is this helping me move forward and feel good and get my life back? So I'm going to start off by giving you guys some suggestions of some of the things that we do and some of the things that we suggest as well. So for example, going out for patio drinks or, you know, going out to a barbecue, you know, planning on having a couple of glasses of wine or a couple drinks instead of, you know, all the drinks, the whole bottle to the point that you feel like crap. So, you know, plan ahead. What, you know, what is my limit? Like what is going to make me feel okay? So I'm not like hung over and feel terrible the next day. Uh, what is my limit that I'm going to plan for ahead of time? I know one thing for me that I've discovered that I really like, especially when it's warm outside and I find it's really satisfying because I don't know about some of you, but I really enjoy some Prosecco. I know Casey does too. Um, for those of you who don't know what that is, it's just a sparkling wine uh, mm -hmm. similar to champagne. So um, yeah, I, what I like to do is I like to get a low sugar kombucha and then replace some of the drinks that I would have with the kombucha instead. Mm -hmm. So not only am I getting this healthy bacteria, it tastes nice and I'm staying hydrated and I'm not going to feel like death the next yeah. day and regret <laughs> what I had. Yeah. 
I do a club soda with lime often. So sometimes I will want to drink, but I don't want the effects of a drink. And I'll just drink a club soda with lemon in it. And it is absolutely fantastic and just does the trick for one, not drinking alcohol. Or if you're going to substitute, you know, you have one drink alcohol, one club soda. It's it's such a lifesaver. That's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So another thing would be thinking about your normal. So not maybe not your normal, but what is normal? Um, normal in today's society, whether you're in Canada or the US is um, feeling shitty. <laughs> it's eating high carbohydrate foods and sitting on the couch being sedentary. Um, and so oftentimes we get into these situations and we're like, well, I just want to be normal. I want to eat what other people are eating. I want to eat the pizza. I want to eat the, the bun with my, um, hot dog. I want to eat a hot dog. Um, but you have a different normal now, if you're on a health journey, right? You have a normal where you eat foods that make you feel good. You have a normal where you want to get off the couch the next morning and go for a run or a walk or spin class with your friends. You, um, you developed a new normal for yourself. So reverting back to the old normal is comfortable and easy to do, but reminding yourself of what is your normal now um, can be a really good mindset shift as well. Um, and, and just reminding yourself that your normal makes you feel good tomorrow morning, the next morning, next week, next month, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And I, and I think just accepting that we're always changing and change can be really good and it's okay to change. Nothing is ever going to stay the same. You know, uh, in my early twenties, when I was in university, I could go and drink pitchers of beer with my friends all night long, stay up till four in the morning and, you know, sleep till 2 PM and get up and do it all over again on the weekend. Like nothing happened. Mm -hmm. Um, that's not going to happen now that I'm in my forties. Like I can have freaking two glasses of wine and feel hung over the next day. So change happens and we have to accept it and we have to make adjustments for our body now, not mm -hmm. for what we wish it would do or what it used to do. Yeah. Yeah. You want to go Jessica? Oh, I was going to say, and um, too, and like I had mentioned before, planning ahead of time, like how much you're going to drink, planning your food ahead of time as well. So making like having that set in your head before you get to the event makes it so much easier to stay on track. And um, I'm a big proponent of this as well. If you're going to events that you're not really uh, looking forward to going to or that you feel like you have to, but you really can't wait to like get out of there, then if you're going to go and do this, then plan ahead and be like, okay, by 9 p.m. we're going to go, you know, that's about all that I want to do. And that's about all I want to participate in this event. Mm -hmm. I want to go home, have a good sleep and enjoy my next day. I don't feel like staying up really late at this event. And I'm also a big proponent of saying no to stuff you don't want to do. But that's a whole other podcast. I'm not going to get into that uh, too much today. But just planning ahead of time, you know, planning what you want to drink and what you want to eat ahead of time and bring some of that stuff with you, you know, so that you you have what you need and you have what you can enjoy. And then you can just focus on visiting with the people who are there that you uh, enjoy and um, just work on and like just enjoy yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing with that would be telling people your plan, keeping people having people keep you accountable. Cause I know at least for me and probably you, Jessica, that when we tell people we're going to do something, we're probably more apt to do it because we don't want to let them down. We also don't want to feel embarrassed if we didn't do it. Um, so telling the host that, you know, I'm eating gluten free tomorrow. Um, what should I bring? You know, what, what are you having? So I can bring my gluten free necessities with me or, um, you know, if you have a buddy there with you telling your buddy, like, it would be nice if you, you helped me stay on track today. Um, those things can be really uh, beneficial. And remember that people like to help. People like to um, be needed and you're not a bother. So oftentimes we don't do a lot of things because we don't want to bother people because we don't want to, um, feel like we we need help but we're only inhibiting ourselves if we do that 
Yeah, um, exactly. And and I know from for myself years ago, this is before I developed arthritis and had to modify what I was eating. I have a cousin who had some health issues and so she was gluten free and there were some certain other foods that she just she couldn't eat either like dairy as well. And so when she came to visit, I was happy to, uh, you know, adjust things and make something that she could eat because I, it made me feel good. I, I wanted to do that. And she always came prepared too. She always came with her. I always thought it was so cute. She had a little basket and she would bring stuff in a basket. And then she also had a little cooler that she would bring with her. And it was because she was taking care of her needs. And mm -hmm. I had no problem with that. I thought that was amazing. You know, she was making sure that she had food that was available for her that worked for her. So she didn't feel like crap. Yep. So it's just like you bringing your salad dressing places. Exactly. I don't want to eat that garbage that they have at restaurants. It's terrifying what's in some of those restaurant and bought salad dressings. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, so I know for me that when a party is happening, a barbecue, a holiday, things like that, more than likely I know the host, right? So I'm going to ask the host, hey, what are, what are you planning on having there? So one, I get an idea of what's going to be there. What can I eat and what can I not eat? And then what what do I want to splurge on and what do I not want to splurge on? So then again, like we talked about planning ahead, I can start planning ahead on my rules for myself, my limitations, my boundaries. But then also I know what I need to pick up from the store to be fully equipped with what I want to eat. Um, because I know if I get there and I don't pick anything up, now I'm mad at myself because I can't eat anything there. I'm also probably mad at the host because that's just me and I need to work on that. But if I can't eat anything, I'm just mad. So um, so I always become prepared with that. Um, but another thing is I get a lot of sleep before I have this kind of party or um, an event, a, a big group thing. I find that with I when I don't get a lot of sleep, I'm more anxious the next day. I make poorer decisions the next day. I kind of just say like, F this, put everything out the window. I'm going to eat a whole bag of chips today. Like that doesn't do anybody good at all. Whether they're gluten-free chips or not, I still don't want to eat a bag of gluten-free. I still don't want to eat a bag of chips, a whole bag. So um, getting enough sleep just puts my brain um, in a better position to make healthier choices for sure. Um, and then also asking or knowing what type of people are going to be there is important too, because then you can kind of get your brain around like, well, Julie always, you know, asked me about gluten free and she doesn't, she's not on track with it or she's not on board with it. And she makes me feel like poop. Um, and also seeing if there's people there that make you anxious or you don't like them. Again, that makes poor decisions in you if you're just like trying to fill the void with eating or with drinking. So I can prepare for all of this ahead of time if I know all of the, the, the parts that are happening. Um, and I know my boundaries and my limitations and I tell myself like, you know, I'm going to have a handful of chips because that's what's going to make me happy. But I'm, I know my limit with chips and I'm not going to have the whole bag. I'm not going to have two handfuls. Um, I'm not going to have any dessert. I'll go home and have my my um, compliant dessert that I have. So I, I set these these boundaries for myself. And then the last thing that usually helps is. Um, I'll usually bring my own either seltzers that I know do well with me or club soda or water. So I'll always have something in my hand. So I'm not tempted to do other things that I don't want to do, um, bring games. So we're not just constantly in the kitchen, just picking at the chips or the cheese or whatever is there. We're, we're outside of the kitchen doing distracting things. Um, and then hang out with people outside of the kitchen and not at the food table. So you're not tempted by all of those goodies and treats and things that aren't in your boundaries list that day. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Those are all really great suggestions. I feel like I went over a lot of mine um, earlier, too, because I tend to talk in tangents. 
But yeah, basically it's planning ahead. Um, you know, like Casey, I also make desserts that are compliant and uh, agree with my body. I know Casey and I have different uh, nutrition uh, needs and things that bother us. I, I'm i allowed, to, I can get away with a few um, like nuts and seeds and stuff. Mm -hmm. I can get away with eggs and stuff once in a while. So I can make myself really yummy desserts and I always have them on hand. So I never feel like I'm missing out. And um yeah, there's just lots of like, I, I always say plan ahead. That's like the most important thing to staying on track yeah. with your with your health and with your eating is to is to plan ahead because it's when you kind of let the night get away from you. And um, it, yeah, things can just go off the rails if you have no goals or anything that to work towards or to stay within. Yeah. So yeah, and I just like to reiterate, um, I love not staying out super late. <laughs> so really? I've, made it, I've made it okay for myself to go home at a normal hour because mm -hmm. I typically go to bed at 930. And um, I don't feel good if I stay up really late. Um, I used to be able to do that kind of stuff, but not anymore. So um, that's one of my my biggest tips is just know what your know what your limits are and respect that, you know, mm -hmm. you don't have to because you're worried about you know what Susie's gonna say if you leave yeah. the party by 9 30. Yeah. Like you know what if Susie has a problem with it, that's her problem. <laughs> like right. literally right. that's her problem. Yep. And the more time you do and the more times you do that as well, the, the more people are gonna know like, oh that's Jessica who leaves the party at 9 30. It's not even going to be a thing. It can be yeah. a joke, but like that's fine. I'm glad I'm going to bed at 9 30 while you guys are staying out till two. So worry, worry about yourself kind of, right? Like do what's best for you. And that's the most important thing at the end of the day. I know that everybody knows that I leave the party really early to go to bed, or I don't say yes to plans that are happening at 9, 945 because I'm in bed. And they respect that and they're okay with that because they probably know not to ask already because I'm in bed. Yeah. My friend will call me at 10 o'clock and I won't answer. And he'll be like, I knew you were sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> right. Because it's 10 o'clock. <laughs> oh, yeah. And sometimes even in the winter, I was going to bed at like 8, 830 some nights just because I just felt like I needed to. So, yeah, yeah, it's you'd have to do what your body needs and what feels good for you. Yeah. So and yeah. with, with no shame. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I guess that's the moral of this, this live today is like, know what's best for you and, and follow that and help get somebody to help keep you accountable. And I know our support groups, our community groups are there for you as well. Everybody is there to support you if you put your goal in there. Um, so feel free to like and share this video if it was um, useful for you, beneficial, if somebody else would find it beneficial comment below on um, things that really stood out to you, things that you have questions on, what your methods are. We'd love to hear them. Um, we will be back next week again, Tuesday, Thursday. We're talking about some other cool um, topics. So stay tuned and everybody have a good weekend. Yes. Take care, everyone. Bye.